physicist. We're going to take a look at uh, some common uh, position um, versus time graphs and then the resulting velocity versus time graph and then vice versa as well. Okay, so I'm going to end up putting a position as uh, shown by x and uh, time a graph and I'll show here the corresponding uh, velocity and time graph as well. Hey, so let's take a look at um, I ended up seeing a position versus a time graph. It looked like that. It tells me the rate of change of position um, stays the same because it's a straight line. It gives us a positive velocity. And in this case, because the velocity stays the same, the acceleration is equal to zero. Okay, let's take a look at that same type of graph, position versus time. Again, our velocity versus time. Let's say it was steeper, but again, straight. Okay. What I'd find is my velocity is higher. It has the same slope all the way along here. And again, our acceleration is equal to zero. Okay, let's take a look at something a little bit different than this. I'm going to take a look at, again, position versus time. And let's say I start with a greater position and I move to a lesser position. How would I represent that on a velocity versus time graph. Okay, so in this case my slope is negative, so I have to have a negative velocity. Oops, I'm actually going to change that. You'll find out why in just a moment. So I have a negative velocity. Right, you ever notice the uh, slope stays the same, so my velocity stays the same? I could read that just the uh, other way as well. If I have a, a negative, a constant negative velocity, that would have a constant negative slope in my position versus time graph. I'm going to go ahead and draw that slightly differently. Let's say I start at a positive position and I drop down more rapidly. Hopefully you can see that that is a, uh, has a greater negative slope. And I should start labeling out with a zero. How would I end up indicating that here? I would have a greater negative velocity. And again, in both these cases, our acceleration is equal to zero because our velocity is not changing. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll uh, do some conditions where our velocity is changing. Okay, so you've probably seen enough of these graphs now that I realize that, hey, if I start off, get position, something that slopes upward, hey, what does that tell me about the rate of change of my position. You can see here that I have almost a zero slope, so my velocity will start near zero. And over here I have a high positive slope, so my velocity becomes positive. Okay. In this case I can see the, the rate of change of my velocity is positive. Let's take a look at something else similar to this. Again, position on this axis and time. Let's say it swoops up more rapidly. How would I see that here? In my velocity versus time graph, I would see something that shows a change in its velocity. But notice the slope here is greater than this slope. I would have a positive acceleration, but it would be more positive than the previous case. Okay, let's take a look at a couple more cases. Okay, hey, so we're going to have the condition where, again, I have position versus time graph. Hey, in this case, let's see what I'm going to do. I'm going to be um, at a positive position and I go to a less positive position. Hey, so what's that going to look like in my velocity versus time graph? Hey, I have something that has right in here, it has close to a zero slope, so it has zero velocity. Here it has a, a negative slope, so I'm going to have something that's going to have in this case, a negative acceleration. Or I could start with a negative uh, acceleration, and I should be able to go to my velocity curve and then to my position curve. Let's take a look at another one here. What if I end up starting with a positive uh, position and I drop off more rapidly? figure out this. Again, I'm going to start off with something close to a zero slope here. Okay, it tells me I have something close to zero velocity. I 
becoming negative and it coming becoming negative more quickly. Hopefully you can see that this again also has a negative but a more negative slope than the previous case. Let me give one more condition. Uh, sorry, just because of room, I'm going to end up writing these graphs side by side. Let's say I have a position versus time graph. You know, I'll take a look at what the velocity versus time graph looks like in this case. Velocity. Hey, so let's say I start off. I have something that looks like that. What would it tell me? Hey, it's changing position uh, rapidly at the beginning and flattens out, so it's hardly changing at all. So I have a, initially I have a high positive slope, meaning a uh, high positive velocity. And by the end of this, I have a zero slope or a zero velocity. This would be something moving rapidly forward and then coming to a stop. We can see at all times it's going forward. At all times it has positive velocity and it ends up stopping. We should be able to read that from velocity and then get our position graph in any of these. You know, from position to velocity or from velocity to position graphs. Good luck. Okay, and just one last note. This is pretty much a review of what you found. I think it was on page 45 of the textbook. You can go back and uh, use that as a bit of a reference.